What's the final of the Gorillas for a side coming to you live from Gorilla Bowls and Recreation Club? We're uh, picking up action with the first end underway. And we have the Gorilla Gorillas. The home club has reached the final. They're up against arch enemies, or arch rivals anyway, the Cabramatta Bull Ants, our feature rink. Once again, we're featuring Corey Wedlock and Gary Kelly from the Gorillas. And they're playing Ben Moorthorpe and Carl Healy of the Bull Ants. Next door, Aaron Tees, Jeremy Henry, uh, taking on Nick Cahill and Aaron Wilson. No score as yet. They're both on their first ends. The uh, collection of lighter blue-coloured bowls on this rink are the Gorillas against the red from Ben Moorthorpe and the darker blue. Gary Kelly, a wonderful conversion there. Carl Healy oh, has the last say for this end, though. He's Kelly holding a couple. Brilliant ball there just to roll Benny Moorthorpe away from the jack. Two down, says Ben. Carl lining up for an attacking shot. Big weight. And a jack will spit out to the side of the rink and we'll start again. So no score. We've had one dead end. And the players agree that they will play them back the other way. So the uh, 24 Gorillas, $44,000 for a side. Each team consists of two rinks of pairs. They play concurrently. They play to the master board. Pennant style scoring. Our final master board only. So whoever is in front after the two 15 ends uh, play, that's the one who will take home the biggies. Uh, the unlimited changes between the pairs after the semifinals, well, that's uh, now non-starter. That's happened. There is no respot, so the dead end we just had will be replayed. They've had their toss, and then no time limit on our final. And we've got uh, a special expert commentator about to join us. It's the uh, CEO here at Wurla Bowls and Recreation Club. It's Phil Kipp. Good afternoon, Phil. And good afternoon, Andrew. Very excited. Uh, it should be a cracker of a match, this final between Rilla and Cabramatta. I'm really looking forward to it. And the Gorillas, uh, well, they stormed home in their semi-final. They were looking uh, in a little bit of bother couple of decent scores in the last few hens just got him home over the top of Broad Beach. Aaron Sheriff looked to be playing all the shots until the last couple of hens the Gorillas managed to just uh, squeeze the, the victory. Cabramatta 2 overcome a, an early deficit against the Carlingford Koalas to get home with the two Scottish internationals very uh, good victory. Corey Wedlock's opening bowl on this replay of the first end. An absolute cracker. Did notice that in our semi-final game that Corey's opening bowl, at least the first half of the game, was an absolute ripper. Probably holding him to a very high standard to say he didn't play as well in the second half of his opening bowl. Not quite as dynamic was probably the way to put it. Any more thought, a little bit of contact... Just turns it over. I think he's still one down. Fantastic position, though. Corey, I'm not sure I'd try and teach that delivery technique. Everything seems to be in motion at once that sort of lurches in the rolling motion off the mat, but very smooth and very consistent. That's it. Consistency is the key. Andrew, for these great bowlers, you'll notice some have had some... Um not textbook delivery, shall we say, especially uh, our Irish uh, team members, but it certainly comes out the same every time. And I think the head's testament to the consistency of that delivery. Well, I don't think I could teach it, but five times, five times world indoor champion. Oh, I think it's a few more than that. You'd have to ask him. It depends who you ask at the time, mate. He'd suggest it's probably seven or eight. He'd probably do it with a sheepish look, and he's a as well too, he's, he's not a boastful sort of guy uh, No, the Irish are never boastful very good at what they do uh, love to celebrate after a match, win, lose or draw, that's the way the Irish are but they certainly love uh, lawn bowls and big part of the Gorillas organisation, uh, Gary Kelly and uh, Jeremy Henry Gary's on a pretty good line here, he's just going to crunch into Benny Moorthorpe's bowl, a little bit unlucky He's turned it in for shot. A bit disappointed with that. The toe will probably be throbbing a bit more after that delivery than it was before. 
can see he's just noticeably hobbling a little bit. So we we're wondering who he kicked to, to damage the toe. Well, it's been a long tournament, and um, it was actually at uh, Platinum League. We're up the Central Coast. Uh, we played Raymond Terrace, and on the way to Raymond Terrace, and someone should point this out the council, there's a big hump in one of the curbs. Uh, actually, Aaron Tees tripped over it on the way in, and then Jeremy Henry, Julie Follin, and tripped over it. Um, unfortunately, Gary Kelly really stubbed his toe pretty hard, and we see a great kill there from Gary Kelly. Oh. And, yeah, so he didn't play the um, follow-up game. Um, on the Sunday, he had that day off. Hopefully, he was going to be fit for this, and he has uh, struggled through. But they have played a lot of lawn bowls during the duration of this tournament, and uh, I think he's starting to feel that in the toe right now. Well, uh, got a few more ends to go now after we haven't even completed one. Big kill. Fantastic to have the slow mo replay from our partners, Spacequake. Spacequake Sports presenting this one. It means we get another couple of goes at uh, some good bowls coming in. Yeah, an interesting rule. Uh, we've been playing to a time clock for the duration of the tournament uh, until we came to the semi-finals and final. Final was an hour and 45 minutes, and a lot of tournaments these days re-spot the white uh, when it goes out of bounds. But um, this occasion, we've decided to replay uh, dead ends. But certainly, it was to a time limit um, during the competition part of it. But now we get to the semi-finals and the final here, where we are now, uh, it'll be no time limit. So I would imagine uh, some very aggressive players out there, Andrew. So I think you will see uh, a lot of aggressive bowls. Certainly Gary's known for being attacking. Teasy can play some very attacking bowls as well. And Corey Wedlock, two opening bowls again, right near it. And I think we're going to see this standard right through. Um, two great leads playing today. Uh, Benny Moorthorpe versus Corey Wedlock. And certainly two brilliant skippers. Two internationals, uh, Carlos Healy and uh, Gary Kelly. We're in for a, uh, one hell of a ride this afternoon, I think, Andrew. Well, Benny Moorthorpe is very highly regarded by those that know him. Probably not quite the, uh, the star-studded name of Corey or Teasy or even Jeremy or... But certainly not to be underestimated and a very solid member. And a couple of the bigger clubs in Sydney said they'd be one of the, he'd be the first, if not the second, picked in their pennant sides when they picked them. Then he'll have his hands full this afternoon as we see another brilliant draw bowl from uh, Corey Wedlock. This should be uh, one hell of a battle, this battle of the leads here this afternoon. Well, that is an absolute cracker of a ball from Corey. Sat in between the shot bowl and the jack, covered it up. And you probably see um, Benny playing a couple of yards, just a couple of yards over on the backhand. Benny, of course... The uh, Greens manager at Cabramatta does a couple of jobs at the club, but oversees the Greens. Done a very good job on those Greens as well. I hope the Greens here are wonderful, Phil, because apparently I'm playing outside on them on uh, Sunday. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain in the Illawarra. We've been well documented on the media, Andrew. Uh, they have been a bit doughy this week, it's fair to say as we see a great attempt there from Gary Kelly, uh, which isn't far away. It's in a great position there. Oh, there was a metre and a half of water over the road near my house, so certainly have had a bit of water. And good weight now from Carl Healy. Oh, he's hit. He's still two down. It's probably uh, not as good a two. Two ends completed on our other rink, and it's one all. So our master board, one all. I would expect Carl to be able to draw at least second shot here. He's certainly just on the draw. 
Just trying to draw that shot ball off. He really does draw a good second shot there. Carl's a very motivated player. He um, takes his bowls pretty seriously. And he's... Um, he likes to laugh, but he is very serious on the green. Yeah, we'd like to thank uh, Andrew Lynn on behalf of everyone in the Grills organisation for looking after the commentary for us this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we had a funeral to attend during the semi-final and Chris Kuzak's hard at work and he can't make it, but I noticed he just sent us a message um, saying, fire him up, Kippy. Uh, we'll certainly do our best, Chris. We'll miss you, but we've got the second best uh, commentator from Weight Watchers in Andrew Lynn. <laughs> And uh, I'm certainly sure that we'll enjoy the afternoon as everyone uh, watching from Australia around the world will too. And uh, Carl's hunting this. Oh, he's played that very well. He's turned his own onto it. He got the shot. I'm probably not as good as for your beer sales as Galoot, though, Kippy. Uh, no one's as good for our beer sales as the big Galoot, Andrew. I'll guarantee it. So one to the Boyants to open the scoring on our third attempt at the first end. Uh, the milk tank has pulled up out the front to deliver your milk for next week. Uh, yes, we need a lot of milk for next week. It is the State Junior Championships next week here uh, and we always set records in our cafe for sandwiches, milkshakes and especially thick shakes. Uh, so we're looking forward to hosting the State Juniors again. Uh, I think we've hosted for over 20 years now. Very proud partners of Bowls New South Wales. And uh, I think we've got record numbers uh, next week, Andrew. There's been a change to some of the formats, I suppose. Yep. Um, so we've uh, changed it up. We're now open events for entry from around the state. So we're running uh, four different categories of singles. There's a boys and girls under 15 and under 18. And we'll have 99 players in the state junior championships here at Warilla over those events next week. Boys and girls pairs to open proceedings on Monday, then the singles and the open fours. 99 players. As we see advantage Benny Moorthorpe after the first two bowls come down. Certainly a buzz about the championships. They eh? might see some bowls as good as these guys as well. The kids always seem to play some very impressive shots. And we've certainly seen some superstars um, come through the ranks of junior state bowls. Um, usually they'll be fresh-faced. Um, what is it, 12 to 18-year-olds at that stage in the juniors? Yeah, pretty much. We might have a couple even younger than 12. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll recognise uh, some names in four or five years' time, some of the uh, line-up of those juniors that you see next week. As uh, we see Carl just calling Benny for some cover behind and just beat his own shot bowl by a yard to the back. Well, three of our four players on this rink played in state junior championships here. Corey, Ben and Carl. Might be a few years ago for some of them, but they've all been in our New South Wales under-18 side as well. Yeah, I think Gary Kelly, too, was a, a representative grenade thrower for the IRA at one stage uh, when he was growing up in Ireland. Yes. And certainly converted that to a handy lawn bowls talent. And, of course, Aaron Tees on the other rink. Another state under-18. Nick Cahill for uh, Cabramatta. Queensland under-18 rep. Queensland rep recently too. Well, what a ball. The neck gets one through. Little toucher right back to the ditch. That'll be tough to beat. Uh, Benny Moorthorpe got him too close. Yeah, brilliant ball, Corey Wedlock. These blokes just don't draw. Uh, they're great with the yard on, two yards on, the full drive. Uh, they have the full arsenal uh, in the both lead positions. Or in, in fact, all four leads on both rinks. Um, so, again, it's not just going to be a boring game of um, three lead bowls to start with. It's some good conversion shots. You'll be seeing conversion shots being played uh, from the second and third bowl on, I would imagine, in the course of the afternoon. 
Oh, Carl, down on the backhand. Wants to just get through. Just going to not stop before the ditch. He might have been playing just a little bit of sit and stay weight there. A uh, very tough draw shot right to the edge of that ditch to beat that shot pole. It's probably only two bowls off the ditch. Yeah, the problem he's got though is that one's a toucher. So if he does knock it in, he's got to stop on the edge closer than it finishes up in the ditch. That's why we got you, Andrew. I didn't even notice that it was the toucher that went in the ditch. Thank you for that clarification. So that makes that shot even tougher. So if he does get it in the middle and pushes it to the side, then he can stop. I think he's got quite as much weight on this one. Yeah, he just ran out of the steam. Just trying to draw it cold with that one. Like yep. I say, a very tough shot to uh, draw right to the edge of the ditch. Not a bad second. Gary, at least he, he's got the, the luxury of being able to use Corey's bowl as brakes. He's got Corey interested. He's right. just got a sail past that front one, which it does. That'll be two of the grillers at this stage. Just looking for just under a metre. I think Carl, would, he'd be happy to draw a second shot here. Got interest. Well, that's a super effort. Still one down. No, it's a great ball. Great second shot. Be very happy with that. I think the secret this afternoon, they're playing 15 ends per rink, uh, 30 ends on the master board. So it's a case of uh, cutting down the damage and keeping a close eye on that master board. Just remember, folks at home that are watching, it's like a mini game of penance. You've got two concurrent rinks of pairs uh, playing 15 ends each and playing to a 30 end master board. Oh. As we see some brilliant bowls there I'm from sorry. Gary Kelly. Oh, hang on. That two. is talent, drawing within three inches of the ditch. That's two to the Gorillas. So we're two, one after two in favour of Gorilla on our rink that we're streaming. Now the other rink has Disco up two, one after three. So all square, five ends down, 25 to go. And I didn't even have to take my shoes off to work that out. <laughs> I'm just keeping an eye on the comments. Craig Sutton from all the way out at West Wyalong thinks I might be the Ray Warren of bowls commentary and I'll tell you Sutter you're the Ray Warren of drinking after the game as again they just pile them on the jack these two leads great starter from Corey Wedlock well, he's got that art of leading down Pat keeps going like that he'll maintain his place in the Jackaroos and the national side. Yeah, there's a couple of Jackaroos out there this afternoon, Andrew. Well represented. Aaron Tease, Carl Healy, uh, Corey Wedlock. Disco. Yes, Aaron Wilson. Nick Cahill, I think, is in the emerging squad. Uh, as we hear in the background, a brilliant hit by Aaron Tease uh, to kill the end. So Benny Moorthorpe's the odd one out. Hasn't been in the national squad. Or a national squad. McCahill and emerging Jackaroo. Jeremy Henry. Gary Kelly, both internationals for Northern Ireland. Carl Healy, Aaron Tees, Corey Wedlock. All uh, represented Australia at the last Commonwealth Games. And that's what we're looking forward to, such tight heads this afternoon. Um, there's a plethora of talent out there, and uh, I'm sure they're going to put on a show. We see Benny Moorthorpe's close here. Oh, great effort. Corey Wedlock again well down himself. In ways, though, Corey's using bowls that are Bunny's bowls. 
Uh, no, he's got a couple of sets. Uh, I don't know if these are his widest set. I'm not sure what he's using, Andrew, unless you do this afternoon. Oh, well, they've got an arrow on them. That's about all I can tell you. Yeah, I think there's a wider uh, brand of arrows. They tend to use the wider bowls indoors and narrow bowls outdoors these days. As we see a great attempt with Benny Thorpe, Moorthorpe's last bowl. Pretty close for shot up there. There's not a lot in that. Even the live view is inconclusive. Good thing for Gary is that it's Corey's bowl just behind. He can draw on that forehand, just get around Benny Moorthorpe's bowl. A little touch will make two, maybe three. Just going to go past. See Carl Healy playing the opposite hand. Coming down on his backhand. Ideally, he'd love to get back to Corey's bowl. I think it's a great attempt for that. And just through. Darren Draper's just asked what bowls are they using. It's fair to say we have no idea, Andrew, is that right? Lawn bowls. Yes. So our apologies for that, Darren. Uh, three of them using arrows. You can tell that by the logos. And uh, I'm pretty sure that Benny Moorthorpe's are a dynamic. As we see Gary Kelly try to ride this one home. It's just got to fall over. And uh, Carl's, I think, got a set of Henselites or Drake's Pride. I'm not sure... I'm pretty sure Carl's a Hensel Light user. Actually, let me adjust that. I'm, I'm certain that Carl's a Hensel Light user. Yeah, as he just misses his line with this one. They might be the XGs. Unless he's changed recently. Gary and Corey's bowls look almost identical. All right, Gary Kelly just trying to tip that front bowl over. Oh, I think just trying to get a front toucher for three. He's got Corey a little bit interested. Edge of that. Yeah. Coming beautifully for shot. Brilliant bowl. Well, Corey's called that as one, so second shot might be that orange bowl uh, that we can see in front of the jack. Yeah, I think Gary would have loved to have got a little touch on that just to maximise the result. But in this company, one is a good count. It certainly is. So I can tell you, Corey's bowls are quantums. We'll just see it on the broadcast. There you go. Uh, thank you, Lee Stinson. Uh, Bowls Tragic, and uh, the Executive Sports Director at uh, Bowls New South Wales. He's got Benny with an XG, uh, Benny Moorthorpe. And I'm not sure if Carl has his XGs or his Tiger 2s. Yeah, there's not much turn at the end, so they may be his XGs. But I have been wrong before. Well, Benny's actually got an arrow. You can actually see the arrow branding on the outside of the bowl. Well, there you go. After that wrap, I just gave to Lee Stinson, and I think they may have just called the umpire for measure. But they've taken uh, one gorilla bowl out. They're just measuring for the second shot. And Lee, I hope you're looking after the uh, the better half of your relationship. And happy birthday, Jody. Oh, yes, that's right. Lee's uh, back in Orange celebrating Jody's birthday. Again, I'll um, reiterate Andrew's remarks. Happy birthday, Jody. And you take her somewhere nice for dinner, Lee. Don't be cheap. As we've got the council umpires on the job, uh, taking take two of them to measure. Uh, team umpiring. Recommended for uh, World Bowls events, team umpiring. Two people to do a job just to uh, 
be efficient? No, no. We carry the same philosophy into our uh, greenkeeping staff. It's certain to say, Andrew, and I'm sure Shell Harbour Council uh, have a similar philosophy on getting work done. Just going back between the bowls to check. Yep, just uh, double check. Always yep. go back and make sure the equipment hasn't moved. That's correct, being an old umpire yourself. And uh, so that was second shot, that orange bowl in front of the head. So one further shot to Warilla. Got the lead on both rinks now. So he's leading Disco 4 2 after 4. And it's uh, we've got two one after two on this board. We just going to have a look at those stores, uh, scores. It's either six uh, three or seven three to the gorillas, depending on what's happening up there. It could be six three. I think it's actually uh, three one after three on our board. It just hasn't been changed right. over. In which case that is correct, that uh, score on your screen will be 7 3. As we see, another great starter from Corey Wedlock in peppering this jack early on and certainly putting some pressure on uh, Benny Moorthorpe. Well, if you, want a, you want a textbook on lead bowls? Corey's first bowl, you'd take the photos of it at the moment for that textbook. You bang one on it and one just behind is the old theory. Yeah, you can't beat lead bowls like that. Yeah, interesting game, three bowl pairs. The uh, leads get three and the skippers get three. Yeah, so they do get the bonus bowls, not like traditional uh, pennants or traditional pairs where you lead off with your first two bowls. Uh, they'll be getting three each to start with. And obviously then the skippers get three. Uh, this is the skippers game, this three bowl pairs format. Oh, that's good to be a skipper when your lead puts two down like Corey just has. Yeah, it certainly is. Benny Morthup just trying to reach up through those. He just got a little bit wide. We have uh, Michael Fasalo saying that Ben has got a dynamic, Andrew. Yep. Nick Fasalo, one of the Cabramatta players, featured in our multi-disability championships that we've broadcast up from Dubbo. As we see a great cover bowl from uh, Corey Wedlock with his last. His skipper asked him to put one behind to split those uh, two Benny Moorthorpe bowls. And uh, he's, he's done that quite successfully. Yeah, Benny Moorthorpe just again with the arriving weight just under the line there. And so Corey and Gary, I think they're just going to try to draw on the uh, forehand coming back uh, and just try to get behind those two shot bowls. When I say coming back, coming back to the club, uh, clubhouse. Ideal, he would love to cover that Ben Morthorpe bowl out to the wing. Pretty much done that. Yeah, I think the aim was to split those two bowls. And he's done that quite successfully. And we might see Carlos Healy having a good niggle at this and a good weight. And it's a great hit. And I think it's still in bounds, Andrew. He got the two bowls out. They're just having a look at the jack now. I always laugh at the players who go and put their head out near the boundary line, look up and down and try and work out if it's out. I can never tell from actually on the rink. I need to go behind the peg. Well, they certainly haven't done that, but they have determined, I think, that it is in. Wait, they have another look. Yes, he has gone behind the peg now, Andrew. And it says, yeah, it's in. It's like the players will walk around for five minutes looking at a bowl and go, oh, is it, is it shot or is it... Just put a tape on it quick. 
Yeah, so now it's just a skipper's draw shot match uh, with a couple of bowls each to that wide jack that's virtually on the boundary line. Oh, Gary's taken the very safe option. Draw it well inside. Don't want to leave the bowl out of bounds with your opening one. Make it easy for Carl. Carl is following him down on the same hand. He's uh, going to come underneath as well. It's not quite as much. Just going to stop on Gary. So yeah, It certainly is enough uh, for one to Cabramatta. Um, but Gary Kelly would be disappointed if he couldn't draw inside that one. He's just been a little bit timid. Carl doesn't need to do anything different from his opening bowl. Well, Benny's just called Carl's one down, actually. That might have finished up shot, that short bowl. Well, yeah, they are a bit further through than they look on camera. He's got a bit of room. Will he stop in time? Possibly. Well, no one's quite sure what's happening up there. They're both having a close look, uh, Benny and Corey. We'll have a look to make sure he's in. Well, that's a thought, yeah. Let's just see the other side of the jack. First of all, we've got to check if that's in bounds. They might have said it wasn't. In which case, it may have been one of the front bowl. Corey is grabbing the mat. Yep. Uh, yes, it was one of that uh, last bowl of Gary Kelly. But jack out near the boundary peg really does. It just changes your line and changes the thinking. Yeah, it does. You don't want to land out of bounds, but you certainly want to get it close. And it's a balance between between the uh, two thought processes. We can say hello to Lucy Beer over there in Guernsey. Hello, Lucy. Uh, thank you for your compliment, and uh, hello to you. I think you've got uh, the World Bowls Indoor Champions coming up in Guernsey uh, very shortly. Uh, Lucy Beer... Very dear to the rules organisation. Great starter from Corey Wedlock. He's on fire with his first bowl, Andrew, today. Certainly has been. Uh, Lucy, very popular here at Werla. A very loved character from her few games in the World Cup World Indoor. Yeah, and uh, any lady that drinks schooners is always very popular at Rilla, I've found over the years. I was going to say, Werla loves their beer. <laughs> And Lucy loves her beer, and she's very well named Lucy Beer. God bless her. That's another great lead bowl from Corey Wedlock, just finishing a foot behind. Well, sometimes the mark of the bowl is not the very good bowls they produce, it's where they finish when they miss. And that's correct, and that's a brilliant reply from yes. Benny Northorpe. Chalk but no result, it's fair to say. Sensational ball. So it is one to Corey Wedlock. He's just going to try to draw a front toucher on that last orange bowl of Benny Moorthorpe. I think it's just going to run out of steam. Had a great line for it. Yeah, it's just a miss on the short side there. Benny would want to just reach. On the other rink, Jeremy and Aaron up 5 2 after 5. Give us a 9 3 master board. As we saw uh, Benny Morthorpe on this rink just miss with his last bowl. Uh, just get outside that bowl of his. And we think uh, Gary Kelly's uh, going to be playing his forehand uh, coming away from the clubhouse uh, just to sit on that orange bowl on the side. Yeah, just cover it up. We see uh, Rod Burke, uh, the president of Coromel Hens Bowling Club. 
uh, enjoying the bowls from the Mater Hospital. Uh, his good wife, Roz, hasn't been in the best of health. So he's at the hospital uh, supporting Roz in her recovery. And so we wish Roz, um, Rod, all the best uh, with her recovery. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Well, a great toucher from Gary. Carl, hello. Just presented a little opportunity, is drawn brilliant. inside. Brilliant. Nothing short of brilliant. Yeah, he just lined those two bowls up. It was a great bowl, Gary Kelly, but he just gave Carlos a little bit of an extra advantage trying to convert that head, which he's done brilliantly. It wasn't quite the gilt-edged invitation, but Carl took it as one. And that uh, forced Gary Kelly, on the other hand, just trying to draw him off. He's got Corey Wedlock interested here. Very close. Wants a little sit on it. Well, half a bowl narrow. Well, half a bowl, not enough speed. One of the two. Carl. Carl, on the other hand, uh, changed hand again, following Gary down. Yeah, no path in on the other hand for him now. Well... Yeah, it's a good bowl, but um, I don't think it really makes it any... doesn't make it any harder for no, we Gaz. Know. We just saw Corey call him on about a yard and a half through. Yeah, so he's trying to reach through this white. Any contact? Yeah, just not going to get back from there. And he won't fall over. So I think it's still one to Cabramatta with a Carl Healy bowl. And all he's got to do is beat that last uh, wing bowl of Gary's with his last, starting to draw another shot. Yeah, I think he'll just try and draw to sit on the inside of that, flop in. Yep. Yeah, Make it a double. 5-3 now on the other rink. Disco scored one. Carl. Pretty close. Just going to run out of steam. So that would be one to Cabramatta. Action. Great starter from Benny Moorthorpe. Yeah, he's changed the length up once he got the mat. They're playing ditch to ditch, the Cabramatta boys. And they were playing short to just over short, uh, the Rilla boys. And preferring uh, virtually on ditch to ditch, uh, the Cabramatta. And uh, certainly that showed with Corey's uh, first bowls caught him out a little bit. With, with Benny right on it, and Corey just uh, drawing up short with his first. The, uh, the ad we've just seen showed some absolute beauties of shots from the drone over the immediate area of Worrella Bowls and Recreation Club. And nice little shot of Little Lake in the area there for your um, wedding, wedding receptions and ceremonies. Yeah, it's a great place out on the point. A lot of people don't. We're on, right on the ocean here at Rilla. Uh, it's a, a lovely sight. Uh, yes, the the point out there is very popular for weddings. There are some big function rooms upstairs, so we do cater for a lot of weddings. And uh, it's a very popular place. We've got 25,000 members, um, over 300 bowling members. Uh, and we'd like to think that everyone that walks through our doors enjoys themselves and walks out with a smile upon their face, Andrew. I know you do. I like coming to Worrell. enjoy playing bowls here. 
even if I do play for another club. I have a member here. Be here on Sunday to play. I will enjoy myself very much. Hopefully come away with a win. Oh yeah, best of luck on Sunday. We had a few washed out games over the course of the local pennant season, so we're catching up on uh, Saturday and Sunday this week. Of course, we'll, uh, we'll be about the same time as the Platinum League, so just wondering whether there'll be more, more spectators outside watching uh, me playing against Galoot or inside watching the Platinum Boys. Andrew Lynn versus uh, Chris Kuzak. Chris Kuzak, the big galoot, that will be entertaining, folks. So, uh, yes, I would recommend to get down here and watch it live. We won't be live streaming that match. We don't have uh, wide-angle lenses. Apparently the green keepers are scared. Green keepers are scared. What's well, going to be the aftermath of the greens when they come back on Monday. So, uh, we saw Corey Wedlock uh, just with three loose ones there after the uh, change of length. Uh, so it's certainly advantage Cabra Matter at the moment. With... Uh, Carl Healy just drawing down uh, on his back end. It's easy, just played a conversion to pick up, uh, I think it was two. Carl Healy, pretty close, just going to turn over the shot bowl. Yeah, it sits in there for second shot, probably at least three. Uh, it's Cabra Matter at the moment, a little bit of pressure on Gary Kelly. I'm just go, yeah, John Foote's just asked if it's on YouTube. Unfortunately, it's not on YouTube. Maybe I'll see it's certainly on the uh, Rilla Gorilla's Facebook page. Well, Gary's decided to go big, and he's gone very big. And it's in the ditch, but I think he's killed it. Well, Corey was happy with that result, though. Oh, I killed it in when it's three down. Great bowl. Well, that's how much of a target he needed. About half a bowl. Don't need any more than that, says Gaz. Bang. He wants a slow-mo replay. Brilliant hit for Gary Kelly. The slow-mo replay, so just how much the Jackson bowls actually bounce around when they're hit. You don't realise how much they bounce up in the air? Uh, no. Like you say, it's uh, a wonderful innovation, the slow-mo replay. And yeah, we'd like to thank at this stage our uh, media partners. Uh, Space Quake are doing the... Uh, Vision for us today, a great production company, and we're also uh, very lucky to have the services of Dave Allen uh, from Inside Bowls. They've been doing some match reports for us, uh, getting around as we see him stretch this jack out again. I don't know if that's going to go in the ditch. Well, it stopped, but the problem was it stopped once it had gone over the lip. And we would expect to see a change of length now. So Corey has brought the mat up. Run up a couple of metres. And it certainly won't be going anywhere near the silver six foot mark. So we were looking at around about 36 metres for the uh, Cabra Matter roll. More like about 26 from Corey. Bar service at the green, Phil. Bar service at green, and uh, without Mr Kuzak here as a bad influence, like I'm with you, Andrew, I can say that I'm on Coca-Cola. We'll be driving home. So I don't know if my excitement levels will get up uh, the way they usually do, but we'll see how the match pans out. Well, if you have enough of them, the, co the caffeine will kick you into gear. Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so. Well, Corey, it's not a bad reply. But they just... Yeah, just probably dropped a foot short, and I would say it's one to Benny Moorthorpe. Looks pretty well down again. Just a little under the line. He'll sit on his previous bowl. There would be not too many leads to be unhappy with those two bowls, Andrew. Well, I would be ecstatic if my lead produces those on the weekend. He's now got to get back to the jack. Geez, he's doing his best. Great reply from Corey Wedlock. Right. Just have snuck in for shot there, I think. Doesn't change Benny's shot. He's just going to try to draw around that last Corey Wedlock pile. He's around, just past. 
Not a bad home. Yeah, Carl, Carl Ossili wouldn't be too unhappy with that bowl, Andrew, I wouldn't imagine. Well, I do know Carl's theory for a lead is make sure you're up. Don't care if you're not shot, but don't be short. Well, Benny Morthorpe certainly fulfilled that mission on this end. He'd prefer to be shot, of course, but... We see other... Well, that is, that's the Corey best bowl of the end from Corey. Might have been shot with his second, but it was short. That one sat it right in behind the jack and just uh, reduces the options for Carl. Prior to that, Carl could have a quite an easy run through on the forehand between the two to trail the jack. Now Corey's bowls in the way. We might see a weighted shot here from Carl. No, he's just playing up through the head. Might be just looking at a little rattle on that jack. Just hoping it'll spit. Oh, he's cleared a path for himself though. And Corey, yep. He's caught him on the forehand. He probably can't draw a shot there, but big danger for Orilla. Yeah, he's called him with the two orange bowls uh, behind the head. Uh, just to provide a little bit of cover. There is danger out there. Well, Carl's got a backhand shot available. He probably hasn't changed it. No, he probably just would have liked another foot of running there. If Carl can just grab hold of that jack and poke it through the hole, he's got four sitting there waiting. That's certainly what he's trying to do. I don't think they'd all count if he gets it through, but he's got a chance. Wants to turn quicker. Just going to slide off. Yeah, Gary and Corey just talking about the head, contemplating what to play. There's a little bit of danger out there on uh, Gary's forehand now. He gets a plant on the two wing bowls. He can actually turn that dark blue bowl, uh, the dark blue Carl Healy bowl, in a shot. Yeah, doesn't want to push it in for shot. But there's heaps of danger on the other hand. Uh, the possible trail through the hole to the two orange bowls. So they've decided on the forehand, uh, try, try to slide them two, slide past those two blue bowls that are together uh, and get to the orange bowls just behind. Well, he's played it very well. Yeah, great bowl, Gary Kelly. Because if that jack rattles off the shot bowl, that's probably where it's going to end up. There's still a lot of danger back there. I think the four bowls at the back are all Cabramatta bowls. Um, it's a case of how Carl Healy gets the wide amongst those uh, four bowls at the back. Gary does have one shot left, though. Much tighter line from Carl here. Will it hang on long enough? No. But he's... Well, it will flop over, get a touch of the jack and end up shot. So, Gary... One ball left, one down. I think that was second prize for Carl. First prize, of course, was to give that jack a little rattle with that weight. Yeah, tough bowl here for Gary. He's got nothing at the back. Cabramatta owned the four bowls at the back, so there is danger if he goes hard. He can play. Look, they're saying just play a little bit under. Doesn't want the jack doesn't want to punch the bowl onto the shot bowl either. There's only one down at the moment, but uh, there's some danger in trying to convert. Well, he's playing with good weight. One down and two down. Well, you could call that a little bit unlucky, a little bit lucky. It did catch the back bowl and bounce back. Well. There's plenty of worse results available. There certainly were plenty of worse results available. Plenty of better ones as well, but two shots. 
So it's 11.9 on the big board. With that change, it's 4-all uh, on our feature rink. And 7-5. Tees leading Wilson after eight ends. So they're two ends ahead of us. Thought you said the big fella was hard at work. Finish, mate. So we see this masterboard tighten up. We're just about halfway through now at 14 ends. Uh, the masterboard is the 30 ends, 15 ends a rink. We've seen a great battle. I think Corey's probably had slightly the better of the lead battle at this stage. He has certainly on his uh, preferred length of end, which has just been probably short. Um, and then when the Cameron Matter boys get that mat, uh, they stretch it right out. And I suppose Benny's had the advantage on those longer ends, Andrew. Yeah, it's four all on the big board on the our rink board, so nobody's really got the big advantage so far. I think the thing is that uh, it's a good battle. Oh, it's a great battle. I think it'll go all the way down the line. I think we've had these two teams in at least one, maybe two finals of the four aside over the years. And uh, both have been cracking matches, and uh, this one isn't disappointing. Oh, Benny, he's just looking to come down on the backhand. Nice little draw there. Toucher would be ideal for him. Just like this. Knock it in behind his own. Flop over. Yeah, two brilliant bowls from Benny Moorthorpe. Corey, he'd be looking for pretty much the same bowl as Benny just played. Wants to reach down. Oh, saw the head drop down. That means he's not going to reach down, Andrew. That's the forehand, mate. He'd be a little bit disappointed with uh, those two short ones, Corey Wedlock. Corey's one of those players you can watch him and you'll know what his bowl's doing because he, uh, if the eyes drop down to the green, you know it's not quite what he wanted. So we see Benny Moorthorpe now. His skipper just called him past those bowl, just to cover a trail on the other hand. Pretty well down. Maybe would it have liked to have been another 20 centimetres or so? Yeah, just past those bowls would have been handy. Uh, Corey. Oh. And I think that means Corey didn't like it, Andrew. He wears his heart and his sleeve out in the bowl on green. Like I said before, you can generally tell uh, what sort of bowl he's going to play. Uh, when he lets it go. And he was disappointed with that, and that's why. Uh, he's got three bowls short there. And two, at least two down. Uh, yes, so he's disappointed. That just shows he's passionate. He's passionate. Where's his passion on his sleeve? He's a South Sydney supporter. Usually South Sydney supporters wear their uh, passion on their sleeve and their teeth on the sideboard table, Andrew. Well... Oh. I've just said that for Chris Kuzak, uh, one of our other commentators. Just walked in the building, so Chris Kuzak is in the building. We'll be handing over one of the microphones to him uh, shortly, so he can regale you uh, with a few tales. And uh, He's not talking about football this year, though. He's a South Sydney supporter. Not many of them are, Andrew, this year. As we've said, that first one, just get wide. He just want to be a yard or two past that, again, to cover that trail uh, that Gary's going to play on the other hand. But uh, you actually might follow him down because that last bowl, or the Benny Moorthorpe bowl especially, is something to work off if Gary plays his hand. He is lining up on the forehand and going quick. Going very quick. Just going to peel one of Corey's out of the front. Yeah, nothing's changed up there. Yep, so he's just going to try to uh, push that orange or, or his own bowl through or just be around him and get another yard past uh, that orange and blue bowl that you can see there on the left of your screen. He's inside him and he's pretty close. He is probably only two. Flick out before. I think he's going to go back there now. 
Definitely two, yeah. Yeah, Corey's telling Gary it's definitely two, dear. I think the the point there was don't don't go too quick again because we get our peel his own out. He could be four or more. And that's right, he has changed his shot. He's just reaching up uh, on the backhand. Uh, you're playing for a dead chook on a Saturday afternoon. You'd be tempted to uh, switch over and trail this to try and make a full count. Not sure Carl will risk that. I think he'd rather keep Gary on a tougher shot. If he tried to turn it around the corner, he might just open it up enough for Gary to have an easier shot. Three behind on the master board with half the ends to go. Not a huge task. If he did play his backhand, he could just chip that jack across to the right of screen and be holding a good four or five. But where it is, is tough for Gary Kelly to get to, so cover or block? It certainly is. They haven't decided on the shot. We're not sure what it is. If you had last bowl of the head, you might consider just trying to kick that jack 20 centimetres or so. But I don't think I'd risk opening that head up to give Gary any more to look at. No, He's no. too good to too good to give him and no, make it easier for him. Carl, he'd love to get a little contact on that. Stand it up. Oh, I think he'd love it. Would have liked one more roll. Yeah, nothing's really changed up there. Gary Kelly's turning up between a dead draw and some weight on the forehand. And Gary Kelly just wandering up towards the head to have a better look. Suppose they're contemplating a dead draw either hand. There's danger in there to play weight, like you said before, Andrew. The good news is he's not as hobbling as much walking up this as he was earlier. The question is, does he try and dead draw backhand? Just sit on the, the bowl. The danger is if he's a fraction tight, just nibbles the jack and then rolls out. Could give away a couple more. Or does he play the forehand and try and just get on the inside of Benny Moorthorpe bowl and just get the little run in? There is a danger there of turning that Benny Moorthorpe bowl in for another counter as well. So, last bowl of this seventh end of this clash. Little stretch. Yep. Bend the toe. Backhand it is. The attempt to draw on the backhand. I think he was just trying to sit that orange bowl at the back with that one. Just enough weight to reach that, but he's missed it all together. That will be a couple to Cabramatta. Diamonds Reception Centre, your perfect I-do venue. Bring your wedding vision to life on the stunning Shell Harbour coastline with picturesque waterside ceremony options and boutique on-site accommodation. Diamonds Reception Centre, where forever starts. back to live and uh, no surprise about the length thrown they've gone long Benny Morthorpe's very, very close with his first 
Um, just eight inches in front of the jack. See Corey Wedlock with his head down. Um, it's not that far away, but it's advantage Benny Moore, Thorpe and Caprimata after the first two bowls of play. Well, that long end is where Benny has got the, the better. Another good shot coming here from Benny Moorthorpe. All right. Very good. It's just that, just behind Jack High and uh, close, that does give Corey something to look at. It's not quite getting down. Good effort. Yeah, much better, way. Corey Wedlock, as we see what happened to the other rink, uh, Rule have just skipped away. Uh, 12. 12 5 after 10, so. Yes. It's easy, must have just picked up a few shots. And that gets Rule out to a little mini lead of uh, 16 to 11 on the master board. Uh, after 16 ends, just after half time, there's a long way to go in this match yet. Well, 5 in, 5. Shots in 14 ends, certainly not a match-winning break. It's a, wouldn't feel comfortable with it, but you'd be happy to be in front. You see Corey Wedlock reaching through with his last. Oh, well. And getting a feather on the Ben Morthop bowl and running through to the ditch. That was about as effective as a South Sydney tackle. Yes. You're a South Sydney supporter, Andrew? No. Dragon supporter? No. No. We'll keep working on it. Who's a sad team have you as a supporter, Andrew? Oh, I'm not a real big footy fan, but I love seeing everyone get annoyed when the Broncos win. Fair enough. We all do. See Carl, Carl Hilly come back to the clubhouse on his backhand. Last year's grand final was a horrible day for me because I tipped Penrith and the tip of Penrith won me the tipping competition but I didn't want Penrith to win. Fair enough. Interesting way to approach life. See Gary Kelly following Carl Hurley down on the backhand. Again, he's just trying to draw in through that port uh, to the jack. So I wanted the Broncos to win. But I wanted Penrith to win so I could win the tipping comp. So I was uh, going to be <laughs> unhappy with every, any result. <laughs> well, that was very close. Uh, Gary Kelly nearly getting through the back door. Um, but we do understand that Cabramatta is still holding one. And Carl Healy switching hands uh, to his forehand. Yeah, just drawing to that blue bowl on the left of the screen behind the jack. Oh, that's the last bowl of Gary Kelly. Well, Carl will be happy to turn that one up. Oh, well. Geez, he was a tad unlucky there. I just had to squeeze the jack the other way for a couple. Well, I did say he'd be happy to turn that one up, but uh, he wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, from that great close-up, it looks like one to the Warilla Bowl. Hey, Gary, be trying to change this still because Carl Healy's got a lovely shot to sit that ball through to make a couple. So, Gary, be happy to sit it and stay. And nearly return the favour, but I think he's on it for a touch, or it is one to Rilla. So, a couple of balls left on this end. As uh, we see Carl Healy wander down and have a closer look at this head. Yeah, he's, he's got a shot on, but just gives it a little tap, pushes the jack a few inches, he can make a couple of shots, but if it keeps going any further than that, he's down still. It was a lot easier before Gary changed that head up, which is exactly why he played what he did. Two 
don't know if he can get that bowl clear. Right now, Carl's had a good look. I'm not sure what he's up to. Lining up on his backhand and just playing with reaching weight. Well, he was looking just to get contact to chip the ball out, but uh, it's carried through. He was probably a little bit uh, wide for what he wanted. He's trying to peel that gorilla ball out of the head. Did get contact on the shot bowl. It's one to Rilla at least. And I'm not sure what second shot up there. I think it's one to Rilla. Carl Healy's blue bowl. On the right of screen now is second. Gary looks like he lined up to play the inside out, the backhand through his own bowls. Just wants to get underneath Carl's bowl there. Oh. A little bit unlucky there. He just wanted to get inside everything or just get flush onto that other bowl that he landed on uh, and miss the orange on the way. Oh, Corey's brought the mat up again. We won't see the T to T. And we certainly won't from these gorilla boys. If these uh, first half of this game has been any indication, uh, what we will see is this length. Uh, which is short to three quarter, probably closer to short than three quarter. And uh, when the Cabramatta boys get the mat, they will stretch it out. They've been doing uh, all afternoon. And back to Corey Wedlock's favourite length and uh, a great first bowl. And there's been some action on the other ring. Uh, Aaron T is now leading Aaron Wilson 12 to 8. And uh, again, it's close on the masterboard, 17 to 14. In favour of Rilla, we see a brilliant bowl there from uh, Benny Moorthorpe to take the shot off Corey Wedlock. Got a bit excited there, Corey. I think he's trying to reach through that shot bowl. Uh, just changed his hand. And we've got Benny Moorthorpe trying to draw a second shot here. Looks he'll be a little bit on the long side as well. But Carl has given that multiple claps and the thumbs up. Well, we have a theory between uh, Lee and myself, Lee Stinson. The one clap from the skipper is I'm not happy with that bowl. So the single clap is the clap of death. The clap of death. Yep, that's the I'm not happy. <laughs> this is going to sit in behind. Yeah, good, good position. Just in behind Benny's bowl. Benny will look to uh, get another one in the head just behind. Don't know whether Cabramatta will consider going for best back. At the moment, Corey has two if the jack goes metre or more back. Maybe metre and a half to get the two. You know, Gary will play an attacking brand of bowls.
the lining up on his forehand. It's not going big, but he isn't. It's just over draw weight. It's certainly reaching, mate. He is close. Well, he's got the bowl clean. Peeled it off away from the jack. Now holding one. Yeah, brilliant bowl, Gary Kelly. Carl. Well, he can try and draw, or he can just try and get a little touch on this as well. Carl following Gary down. No one here is the same weight. Ditch is close here, Andrew. Yeah, brilliant bowl, Carl Healy. Brilliant bowl. Drawing the carry uh, Corey Wedlock off. Drawing one. Don't think Gary can afford to attack this one unless he attacks bigger than that. Gary's just trying to just reach. Hasn't quite got the speed he wanted. He's going to bang into Corey's second wood. Just cover. So the conversation was, well, they build it up and what he's trying to do is just give some cover out there to the two Warilla Bowls. Just trying to sit in right between them. But he's also happy to finish there because this now means Gary Kelly must cover. Two bowls left to play. Gary doesn't get into that area that Corey put his hand down and showed him. Carl will try to just roll his own shot bowl onto the jack. Geez, he's nearly drawing this, Gary Kelly. Brilliant he's bowl, excited about Gary it. Kelly. Absolutely brilliant draw shot. Don't get any better than that. No, he hasn't quite covered that uh, danger, though, Andrew, that you were just talking about. So Carl, I think he will try to reach. Maybe wait to Ben's bowl behind, Sonny. 50, 60 centimetres. Turn his own bowl onto the jack. He's a touch, touch wide. He can uh, sit out Gary's last bowl for shot. Close. Got enough of it, I think. I think you did, Andrew. We won to Cabramatta. Brilliant bowl, Carl Hurley. Geez, has some quality bowls coming down to these heads this afternoon, Andrew. Back to the action. We'll give you an update on the leaderboard. So uh, over there in the R&T's rink, it's 12-8. Uh, and uh, here the rink we're covering, 6-5. Uh, and 17-14, uh, the Grillers on 19 ends. Just around the back straight now. About to head down the uh, home straight. 10 ends to play. And I think it's going to go right down to the wire. Oh, 
little bit looser than uh, we have been experiencing, but Benny Moorthorpe corrects on his opening effort. He certainly had the edge on Corey Wedlock in these longer ends that uh, Cabramatta prefer. We often see Carl Healy go for the tee to tee. He's one of the players that will use that tactic. Uh, there's quite a few of them. Uh, Wayne Turley, Lee Schrainer doesn't mind going tee to tee. See uh, Benny Morthorpe's last bowl for the end. That's probably the pick of them for him. He's certainly holding a good two. Corey, a little false start. So let's go be last bowl now. Last bowl for Corey Wedlock for this end. Gary Kelly a little bit interested. It might fall out. So it's certainly one to Cabramatta. Uh, possibly two. See the skippers change ends. Update of the score on the other rink. Aaron T is now leading 12-9 over Aaron Wilson. And on this rink at 7-5 to Carl Hurley. The master board's very, very tight. 17-16 the Grillers. N21. Just remember we're playing 30 ends. Three bowl pairs, two concurrent games playing to a master board. Uh, to see who's going to take away the $16,000 first prize money in the $44,000 uh, Ruler Gorillas four side. And a great looking bowl here from Carlos Healy. A lovely little feather just to straighten him up. Yeah, let's pack him in. Corey Wedlock's telling him play weight. Let's get up this, Gary. Well, he can get a result by hitting either one of the short bowls there, but gets the split on this as good. Well, he's just cannoned Carl's last bowl out. I thought more there would have been a bit more movement there, but... Uh, no. Uh, Benny Moorthorpe said he likes it for two. Draw a touch here and make sure of it. It'd be the task for Carl. Love just to hide that jack away. No, Carl's disappointed with that one. Still reaching. Got a chance just to get through his own bowl. Wants it up and over. Perfectly played. Brilliantly played, Gary Kelly. There'll be somebody looking at that saying, oh, he was he was tight. He got a lucky really result. But uh, no, he wasn't tight. He was actually what he wanted. And Benny Moorthorpe uh, calling Carl Hurley. A couple of yards through uh, on his backhand. And play through the shot bowl or drag the white. Oh, well. Very unlucky, Carl Hurley. He was close to what he wanted, but he's just chipped the, uh, the Corey Wedlock ball onto the shot or onto the second shot and Gary just asking Corey is there anything worth playing to and the answer is no. And a dead draw is your option here. So Gary Kelly, backhand draw. Certainly has taken a, a lot wider line than the previous bowls. He certainly looks interested. Corey Wedlock's interested. The crowd's interested. Brilliant bowl, Gary Kelly. They don't get much better than that. And for those wanting to know what sort of bowl Gary was using, he's had a good shot. That's an Aero Quantum. So I think that uh, Gary and Corey using the same bowls. Aero Quantum. 
they look very much the same. And ruler back with the mat, and we go back to this uh, short to three quarter length. And that two coupled with uh, the result on the next means that Rilla leads by two. So Teasy now 12 10 up after 13 ends. As we see, good opening bowl there from Corey Wedlock. The way these uh, boys have been playing these leads, they expect to see something inside of that. So we have five ends left on our feature rink. And there are two left to play on the other. So we're on the rink that will finish last and hang, have the result hanging on the balance of. Just two shots in the main board. As Corey Weblock just getting to the back orange bowl. Uh, just over the draw. Uh, one yard pass. This looks a little bit closer from Benny Moorthorpe here. Very well played. Yeah, brilliant bowl, Ben Moorthorpe. Little toucher. Gee, it's been a high quality game, Andrew. He wouldn't want to see any better, any better bowls. He'd be deserving a high standard if he wanted to see anything better. And that's a great reply from Corey as well. He might have actually drawn that off. He has. He's turned it far enough and then sat right in front of the jack. So Benny Moorthorpe, if he can just get a little nudge on Corey's bowl, he'll roll the jack far enough to his own to be shot. Close. Very close. Oh... Yeah, just a little bit unlucky over the draw. Just peeled his own out. Do you get the popcorn out and buckle up at home, folks? Uh, five ends left uh, here on this rink, and uh, it's going to be one hell of a ride. Well, we see Kippy get really excited if the gorillas go on and keep the uh, the victory. You will see me get excited. Andrew will kick on for the victory. Ah, uh, yes, you certainly will. Uh, but uh, look, I don't mind who wins. Obviously, I'm part of the gorillas organisation, and we always uh, prefer the gorillas to win. But what I'm looking for is some great bowls, and there's certainly been some great bowls this afternoon. Uh, very excited to bring it uh, to bowlers from Australia and right around the world. As we see uh, Gary Kelly just sitting at the back, he wouldn't be unhappy with that. Well, they're talking. Yep, I think they're going to go for the two blues. Well, the uh, message from Benny Moorthorpe was go get it. And Carl, he's lining up for big weight. Yeah, just got an edge of that outside bowl. Hasn't really changed. It's just like uh, they put that head in the mirror. And it's the other way around now. Well, if someone said to you, flick the edge of that bowl and Canada across to get the other one, you'd look at him and go, you're mad. But that's exactly what Carl's managed to do there. He wanted the inside edge of that, I think, to, to try and get them both. Yeah, you see Gary Kelly now just trying to draw that orange bowl uh, behind and to the left of the screen. Oh, well, I think we'll see Carl switch over to the backhand. He won't like that, Gary Kelly. It just makes that target bigger. Well, okay. he's going to go big again. Hasn't really changed it up again. He was a little bit unlucky there, Carl, not to get a better result. Well, what he has done is he's popped two of his own bowls off the rink. Uh, there's only one Cabramatta bowl that we can see there. 
One bowl left each. See, so he's got a bit of unlucky result there. You see the shake of the head in the replay. You see that cannoned one onto the other. And the gorilla's bowl that pumped the one out has gone onto the other. Well, is Gary tempted to play an attacking shot and try and roll the orange bowl out, out of the head? And make a lot. Now, Carl Healy does have a bowl to come. I, don't, I think they're, they're paying Carl Healy a lot more respect than try and rip that bowl out. If there were none other left, you'd be certainly going for it because you'd, you'd be holding a, another three at least. No, that's right. It. And for that reason, we're just going to see Gary Kelly draw down uh, here on the floor here. But they're saying, well, even if we do rip it out, we're not going to get many because Carl will certainly draw one to, to cut most of them out. So Carl's got a chance here to draw. Forehand shot inside the, uh, the blue bowl. Toucher could even make two for Carl. Yeah. One thing for sure, we don't think it'll be the same weight. There's too much danger there with the orange bowl going Well, out. he's not going big. No, no result other than the kill on a big weight that's good for Carl. No, that's right. So we see him instead on the forehand draw. He's having a good hard look at this. Just a bit tight, I think. Wants the inside, inside of that. Inside edge of that brilliant bowl, Carl Hurley. Well, Corey's not going for the mat, and they're kicking him way back. Yeah, I think you'll find that was a brilliant bowl and brilliant enough to get the shot. If he was over. The bowl could finish eight feet away and be brilliant if it's closer than the opponent's nearest. So it was one to Cabramatta. And uh, it was a big result on the other end, on the other rink though. It was four guarantees. You go to a 16 10 lead after 14 ends. Yeah, so one end to play over there. Uh, 16 10 to the Grillers. And they take that little bit of a lead again on the masterboard. 23 18 after 25 ends. Certainly halfway down the home straight. And yes, I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited now, Andrew. I haven't been this excited since uh, the mother in law got bit by a black snake when we're blackberrying up the back of Coldale one day. Did the snake survive? Um, what I will say is the medical staff at Buller Hospital have got a lot, a lot to answer for. As we see, uh, Corey Wedlock following Benny Moorthorpe down after a brilliant start from Benny Moorthorpe. Well, and that's be I think that's Corey's best first bowl on the long ends. So he's um, risen to the challenge in these last few. It was a decent opener from Benny, but Corey's managed to to reach. And another good reply. He's made sure he was there. That's the important thing. Both Corey and Ben made sure they were up to the head. It's been a fascinating battle, this battle between the leads. Um, advantage changes depending on the length of the of the end. And Gary Kelly getting a little bit of curling practice in there, I think, trying to sweep uh, that one into the head. It only finished a foot or so short. Yeah, I was wondering if there was a fly or something there. Benny, he's close with this one. Wants the jack yeah. back to his own. Yeah, brilliant bowl. Changed it up. Certainly Two makes touches. it a little bit harder for the gorilla combination. There might only be one down up there. It's certainly been an entertaining first few bowls. Of 
Corey Wedlock trying to arrive onto this orange bowl. Inside of his own is good. Oh, and it's just fallen back. He's got a better second shot out of it, but oh, he would have liked to have got the, the right end of that rub. Gary just doing a little stretch. It's been a long, hard haul, this uh, 14 lead-up matches and then semi-final and final. A lot of bowls being played uh, from Monday through uh, to the final here on Thursday. Well, they lost an afternoon too with rain, so they played five games yesterday, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Someone actually said they played over 220 bowls. I didn't do the maths. I trust uh, lawn bowlers to be good mathematicians. Uh, but whatever way you look at it, it was a very long day yesterday. See Carlos Healy coming down on his backhand. Would have been 225. It could have been. Uh, Five games of 15 ends, 75 ends, three bowls, 225. Plus, plus replay dead ends, Andrew, let's not forget that. As we see uh, Carl Hilly just collect one of the front bowls. Would have been an attacking shot. Not sure how big a weight he's going to go. I don't think it's going to be too heavy. It's just going to be reaching through. Yeah, he just wants to sit and stay. Doesn't want the wrist to take his own, all of his own out. Now, it gets some sort of contact on that, Jack. To bounce it around and change something up. Touch over, mate. He'd be disappointed with that Gary Kelly, the way he's been playing. Yeah, he would have been looking for just another, another metre and a half, maybe. Chance to just get the, uh, the slide. I think we saw a great bowl from Aaron Tees on the other rink. That was a cheer. And Carlos Healy just on the draw coming back to the clubhouse. You got one of the doilies over there. You could throw it over that head on the other side. It is super tight, packed in. Carl, well, he's there. Yes. He's got the nice little rub in. Definitely two to Cabramatta there. Gary might be tempted to attack this a little bit more uh, aggressively. Well, he's going to be aggressive, all right. Yeah, brilliant ball. He's killed that one. Right, Jack bouncing and spinning around. Giving it a good whack. And let's start again. Well, if you have just tuned in, this is the 40... Uh, $44,000 Gorilla. $44,000 Gorilla's four aside. The all but finished. Two teams of pairs. Three bowl pairs over 15 ends. The master board is the determining factor here in the semi final and final. Qualifying rounds, points for rinks one and master board. We have one of those. Two teams finished with Warilla scoring a 16 11 victory over Cabramatta on that rink. Tees defeating Wilson. And we have four ends left to play on our feature match, which is Gary Kelly and Carl Healy. It's 8 7 at the moment in favour of Carl Healy, which means Warilla leads Cabramatta 23 18 on the master board after 20. Six ends now. Uh, Penny Moorthorpe has a very good opening bowl. How that, mate? Anything just up and over He's been doing very well on the longer length ends that cabramatta has been playing. Corey seems to have been the one with the edge on the shorter lengths when Orilla's had the mat. We saw earlier that uh, Warilla booked their place in this decider with a narrow victory have. over Broadbeach. So Overcoming an early so want, narrow deficit to get home. Whereas Cabramatta knocked over Carlingford in the semi-final, also overcoming an early deficit. Great try. Coming home strongly. Just 
And which one of these two teams is going to finish the strong, strongest? We've got five shots the difference and four ends remaining. Certainly the advantage ruler at the moment. Well, it really, if uh, Gary and Corey can win the next end, they're in a very strong position. And the next two ends, they're, they're really putting the squeeze on. But Benny Moorthorpe holds one good shot here. so close. It's up to you. You left your own up. Or you can play there just to try and land bend up. Go on to the jack or left him out type thing. So that... He just said to Corey, it's up to him. He can try and draw or play an up and over. And he's going to play up and over. Nick. I think it's the easiest shot to play. Nichols. Just wants contact on the shot bowl. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not a bad result at all, though. It gives a look at the jack for Gary. He wanted to turn it actually onto the jack and push the jack back to his own if he got that bowl. Yeah, it opens up the options for Gary. He's got a plant there now. He's got to plant that orange bowl out of the head, but uh, we'll see what Carlos does to change his head up with his next bowl. He's got a backhand draw. I'd say he'd, want, he'd really want to try and cover this up, change it up a little bit. A little toucher, ideally. Inside, mate. Oh, it helps a lot. Yeah. Inside, they're not sure what the score is up there at the moment. Yeah, Corey Wedlock's just away for at the moment, so um, Gary Kelly just conversing with uh, Benny Moorthorpe just to get a uh, better understanding of the position of the bowls around the head. And he looks like he's on the backhand draw. I think Corey might have just gone for a little comfort stop. So Gary will have to ride this way on him. He's got to arrive. He's on a very good line. Just needed another good. 30 to 40 centimetres in weight. And Carl Hurley knock around, just uh, following Gary Kelly down. Trying to get through that port and tuck that kitty away before Gary gets to it. It's going to be a little bit on the runny side. Yeah, yeah. That was Got best back. If you get the jack there, you should be following it in. You know what I mean? If you get that, just lift the jack. Give you two hands. Four hands. Yeah, one down. Yeah, it's contemplating which hand to play now, the ruler team. Yeah, the question is, you play backhand so that you've got a chance to get the jack clean. I think forehand gives you a chance to get the jack. I mean, if you get the jack backhand, you should be following it in. Yeah, they're talking about how yeah. the plant is going to pan out too. So forehand's got a chance to get the two bowls, whereas the backhand's got a chance if you do collect the jack that you should follow it straight into the ditch. Gary's going to play the backhand here. Good news for Gary is he's got two bowls left. If he's got one after this, he's got Backhand last. with good weight. Looks quick. Probably needs an edge now. Okay, all good. Well, that's not a bad result for him. Hasn't changed the best back, but it has just changed up the angles behind. I think it's just giving him more chance to score with a little touch on the jack. It's interesting to see what Carl tries to play here. Wants to take away Gary's chance to play a shot, but not make anything easier. He'd probably like to just tuck that jack right around the corner, Andrew. Let's get it right out of his vision. And he is on a pretty good line. He wants to get just past his own. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's a good bowl, but... Yeah, it just gives Gary a little bit more of a target, depending on what he, what weight he wants to play. Well, I think Gary now can go big weight straight at that last Carl Healy bowl. And if he gets it flush, it should split those two either side of the jack, and he's actually got a chance to come off and get the other one 
on the side as well. Might see if he listens to you, Andrew. Well, I'd love to see him hit it just to see what happens. He is going. Well, he's certainly playing the weight big. you predicted. It's big weight. It's close. And he's killed off the front ones and missed everything. It'll be two to Cabramatta. A little bit unlucky. And let's uh, ignore the the ring score at the moment because we're playing to the master board. The other ring have finished. Um, so that'll bring it back to 23-21 on the master board. Three to go. Two the difference. Uh, yes, I told everyone it'd be an exciting game. And it certainly hasn't let anyone down. T to T. The preferred length for Cabramatta. Benny's got the mat back pretty close to the T. And we're uh, near maximum length again. Yep, three ends to go. 100, 100 metres out for the winning post. See, Benny Morthorpe lead back down towards the clubhouse on his backhand. Well... You're predicting Cabramatta roll three jacks if you're saying it's 100 metres from the winning post? It's an analogy. Yeah. And, uh, three ends about 100 metres from the winning post, depending on what horse you've backed. And Corey Wedlock just uh, following Benny Morthorpe down. Uh, if we're if we're all in the, this end and the next, then we're more like 80 metres. Uh, yes. yes. Great ball from Corey. More like a line up for the collect, Andrew, it would be if uh, Rilla won the next two ends. Yes, well, two ends and it's just about home. We've only got six bowls to play and they win the next two ends. They'd be at least five in front. So really, it's it's a must win for Cabramatta this end. Good job, only two the difference, but uh, we pull it out to three or four shots with two ends to go. And it becomes nearly an impossibility with uh, bowls at this level. Well, Corey's not happy with that one. And he yeah. said it wasn't a good line. Uh, it wasn't a particularly good weight either, given the high standards these bowlers set themselves. Now, this one is on a pretty good line from Benny Moorthorpe. Yeah, just through that's advantage to Warilla at the moment. Yeah, I think so. If Benny had been one ball wider and picked that jack up, that would have been a huge result. But Corey Wedlock would love to get somewhere behind the jack with his last ball. Oh, the little duck flap of the arms happened then, so... Yeah, he probably wanted to be you know, around that uh, orange bowl on the centre line, just behind to cover that trail. Uh, you end up with a nothing bowl out there. Carl Healy looking to score here. Back in draw. I don't think he'd be looking deliberately trailing hit Jack a metre at this stage. Uh, no, dead I mean, draw, trails a bonus, I would suggest. Andrew, that's the mindset, I think, for this bowl. Wants us to get down to that, Jack. Well, he's back to those two at the back, though. Gee, great attempt. There's some danger building at the back there for Rula. Gary, well, anything from a back toucher to being between the uh, the nearest red bowl and the jack would be ideal. And he left that out wide. Yes. Again, that's out near that Corey Wedlock uh, bowl. That danger still exists. Uh, Carl Hurley with a chance to make uh, quite a few shots here. Front toucher gets in four. Close. He's, he's getting everyone interested. Brilliant bowl, Carl oh. Hurley. Shot of the match. One down to four up. Well, that does just make this very interesting. Two bowls for Gary Kelly. And going big weight on the forehand. 
Oh, he's got the ping pong around and got one of them. Yeah, it doesn't make it any easier. They're more or less in a line, those three shot bowls. Well, Carl, I think he'd love to draw another counter. Yeah, without fattening it up at the same time. Be 20 centimetres short or 20 centimetres long. Perfect grass. Don't give him a shelf. Don't give him a look. Betty Moorthorpe's bowl that's short is a very good shield in one way. Last bowl of Carl Hurley's was just a bomb. With a really good chance to make five. But like I said, he doesn't want to fatten this up. He's not going anywhere near it. No, good idea. He's trying to get out where his danger lies, and that's uh, the three gorilla bowls out to the right of the rink as you see it. But it has run into the ditch. So this is a big bowl in the context of the whole game from Gary Kelly. Probably the most important game, bowl we've seen thus far. Well, there's a chance here if Gary can get the outside bowl and put it onto the jack, the jack springs out to the left. He'll go from three down to three up. Well, he's certainly got weight, not the weight he had last time. He's got to get back now. It's three shots to Cabramatta. Well, new leaders on the master board, Andrew. So it's with you after seeing some of the magnificent facilities here here at Rilla uh, but we didn't make miss too much the action and, uh, we, we are playing ditch a ditch uh, it is Cabramatta's map and you saw um, Benny Morthorpe just going through uh, the head with his first he's uh, not quite two metres past because he stayed up good start from Corey very good. Jack High probably not going to be ecstatic about that at this level of bowls. I know, but at least he's holding shot. At this stage of the game, it's going to come right down to the wire, this match. And he looks to be just not quite the right speed again. It's a big improvement. Good home. The racing analogy, again, Andrew, they're 50 metres from the finish line and uh, Cabramana's got a nose in front. Straight out from there. Oh, well pointed from Straight Corey again, again well done, mate, just sitting good. next to it. Chance for Benny Moorthorpe here to just get a good position. to his own not a bad home Got two. well that's not bad yeah, it is two to Warilla yeah. chance for Corey here he's got to draw to to the uh, the red balls he's a bit tight and trails that jack it's okay as long as it doesn't go very far but that's 
almost the ideal position, just gets the feather and runs on. And the, well, the arms come up, says he, he's not happy with where it finished. He would have much rather sat on that bowl and, and split them. But Carl Healy, he's got a chance to play backhand now down to Corey's bowls. A little touch of the jack brings in the other two. Yeah, some big bowls just to come down here now. Yeah, we would love a front touch at this stage of the game, Andrew. Tightish line. Wants the ball. Yeah, they're not sure who's shot up there. Great ball. All the same from Carl Healy. It was close to being spot on. Probably wanted that just a little bit a little bit on the more on the jack side of the bowl. We see Gary Kelly come down in the uh, forehand draw. What touch of here he could make three. We've heard a couple of come on gazers, but it needs to run. Oh, it's not quite. Carlos just asking Benny Morthorpe the question that we won down. Very close between these two, mate. Find a favour up is very close. Do I need to drop a couple of feet? Uh, you're about that, yeah, two feet. Right. Two foot. So he, the question was, do I need to drop a couple of feet? And that's, so he's just trying to dead draw this shot. Yeah, they're not 100% sure who's shot up there, uh, but it is a very similar shot to what he tried to play last shot. And that is that the whole front toucher. And he is close again. He just... Doesn't oh, yeah. want to flick it. Well, that he's was the danger. It. That's very unlucky, Carl Hurley, and it's definitely one to Rilla now. The tight line was the issue there. Um, I just feel he might have been better off to play a little bit wider. Look to actually just sit on his own bowl, roll it half in, or just sneak past and, and roll Corey's bowl. Gary Kelly coming down the forehand, trying to get to the orange bowl at the back. Just past the jack, just past the shot bowl. And he's on a pretty good line for it. Oh, he's given it every chance, just gone through. But it is one to Marilla. Well, we could be going in all square playing the last end. Uh, we could be going all square going into the last end, uh, which would be a fitting finish for this game. It has been one cracker of a game, Andrew. That would rule out an extra end, though. Wouldn't you love an extra end? Oh, the excitement may get to me if it was an extra end. I think I'd have to turn out alcohol. Right, the crowd's silent. Let me watch Carlos coming down on his backhand. Just trying to play through that shot bowl. He's not far off. He's in a pretty good oh. line. Bowl or the jack. A little bit of blue. Oh, mate. Wow. And it's yeah. flopped down onto the jack and stayed with it. And oh. we can say his brilliant bowl, Carl Healy. Gave it every chance to, to count, to score. Got the feather off his own, but that was always on. And just flopped down back to the jack. The Rilla boy's having a good look at this head. And there's certainly some chances there for Gary Kelly to convert this. Well, that bowl probably will go clean. Well, yeah, the problem is if you run at that, you probably punch it onto your own bowl. One behind, two to go. One bowl left on the second last of those two. Wants to get shot. Doesn't have best back. Does have a couple close. Line 
ended up on his forehand. And going big. Uh oh. Oh dear. Well, the call is four. Four to Cabramatta. And, uh, we are looking more like an anticlimactic finish here with, uh, five the difference. Cabramatta well and truly in the box seat. Oh, very sour result for Gary Kelly. Yes, and uh, he doesn't look very impressed up there at the head. And all of a sudden, it's nearly mission impossible for Rilla. Uh, six bowls to each team. Uh, Rilla are five behind, one end to play. We haven't seen too many fives or sixes, I don't think, yet, Andrew. No. We saw a couple of fours in the semi final early. But no fives in those games. And I think you'd, you'd sooner get Galoot drinking lemonade than get a six. He would, yes. Yeah, so we'll see how uh, these ends shape up. Normally when the situation's like this, you might see a lot of weight early, just trying to kill an end if it's not shaping up to get a five or a six. Um, but certainly it's advantage, Cabramatta. Again, with the racing analogy, the favourite just fell over with uh, 20 metres to go. You never know. They may pick themselves up, but it's certainly advantage, Cabramatta, at this stage. Well, Penny Moorthorpe has a shot, has the bowl right on the ditch. Yeah, and he's just happy to spread them around at the moment, Benny Moorthorpe. He knows himself that they need a, a five to draw, a six to win. He's quite happy just to have them anywhere at the moment. Really, you want first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth and eleventh shot. That's about it, but it'd be nice to have one close to the jack as well. Just to take that little bit of pressure off, which he's done. Uh, he's trying to draw second here. No, actually, he's just getting past a little bit. I think uh, that's not an accident. Well, the door's still ajar. Corey wants to get inside Benny's bowl there. Trail would be OK at this stage. Oh, brilliant bowl, Corey Wedlock. Just uh, trailed away to his own. Made a couple. That's two of the five they need. Good news is his other bowl's not too far behind either. He'll be looking to be the fly in the ointment here, though. Nothing too adventurous, I'd say. Just be up and in. Give it a chance to, to be in that head and make it hard for Gary to make any conversion. And yeah, down here on the forehand draw. He's going to be happy anywhere that lands. Just getting amongst the three gorilla bowls. Still, there's still a chance for Gary. Still a chance, albeit a very slim one, Andrew. Hang on. Oh, it's still holding now three. Oh, maybe not. Might have just fallen out. Good. Carl, he wouldn't be feeling any pressure. Get somewhere inside Benny Moorthorpe's bowl. 
and that they're happy with that one. He'd be very happy with that, Carlos. Here's a bit of cover at the front for the drive to try to kill it. Uh, certainly around third or fourth shot. Oh, does Gary now pull the trigger to go for the kill? Or does he go for the Hail Mary trying to get a couple of those Cabramatta bowls out of the head? Well, he's playing with weight. Well, with two bowls in the ditch for Barilla, uh, his only hope to keep this game going now is the kill with his last bowl, Gary Kelly. Um, Cabramatta boys are happy just to cover anything in the rink, I think, at this stage. I just, am I trying to put one on the line, mate? Yeah, Carl talking about dropping one on the line. Yeah, I think they're going to play that blocker. You don't often see it at this level, Bowles. But certainly uh, their intention is to play the blocker, landed straight on the centre line, uh, two or three metres out from the jack. Just so it makes it hard for Gary to try to kill that end. He'll certainly be not trying to kill that end with his last bowl. And there you go, four or five metres short. Um, great bowl, Carl Healy, right on the centre line, right where we wanted it. Very, very hard for Gary Kelly to go uh, full weight drive and uh, get the kill with that bowl that's uh, just landed from Carl Healy. And it has been a very entertaining afternoon of bowls, Andrew, with the semi final and the final. And, uh, it looks like all three have been a, a case of the team that's led early as the one that's been run down in the later stages. Rilla came from behind to beat Broadbeach. Cabramatta came from behind to beat Carlo and Cabramatta oh, the only time they've been in front of the big board is around about end uh, 28. That's the time to be in front on the master board. But we hope uh, you've enjoyed the telecast uh, to bowlers from Australian right around the world. We've certainly enjoyed bringing it to you and just see what Gary Kelly's got in store with his last. If he can kill it, uh, we will continue. But it's a very, very tough ask, uh, the way that head's shaping up. Big drive coming up. Try and give this a smack and get the jack out of bounds. You just looked, saw their uh, Gary Kelly's perspective from the mat. That uh, short blocker is right in his eye of any full drive. But you're sure he won't be short. He's looking for the edge bowl. He's got the gap. That's, that's two to Rilla. But that's game set and match to Cabra Matter after a brilliant game of lawn bowls. Uh, so the Cabramatta Bull Ants defeat the Wirla Gorillas in the uh, final of the Wirla Bowls and Recreation Club. Gorillas $44,000 for aside for 2024. Uh, Phil, the event will be back on the calendar next year? The event uh, is nearly pencilled into the calendar as we speak. So I'd like to thank you um, for your brilliant commentary this afternoon. We'd like to thank our media partners, Spacequake and uh, Inside Bowls with David Allen. And... So we do believe the final score is 28-25. Two shots to Cabra, uh, to Worla. Meaning Gary Kelly goes down nine at 17 to Carl Healy after Aaron Tees, Tees beat Aaron Wilson 16-11 to give Cabra Matta the three-shot advantage on the master board and to claim the title of the Gorillas Four-Side Champions for 2024.